Okay, so it's only been like two months, but there there maybe was a playable breakout deck right in front of our noses the whole time. Breakout is a card that's had a lot of conversation on this channel. Okay, let me pause as I see we have a chest cold open to read. What's up, Spikelings? I'm your Dark Lord, Resurrector of Vampire Pox, Aspiring Spike, and welcome back to my Shark Typhoon. Today in the Typhoon, we're going to keep getting trophies, the only way I know how, playing a completely different deck. <laughs> so sit back, relax, do all the stream help things, like like, sub, shop at the Spikeling store, and enjoy my new Modern Crushing Groove Amali combo. Can Amali break out of its slump with new additions? Probably, but only Cloth is so sure. Thank you, Chess. We'll probably play some Vampire Pox today, too. Um... But the thing with Bre Breakout is a card people are so hyped for. Breakout, 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 Breakout. Um, breakout, re look at the top six cards of your library. You can reveal a creature from among them. If that creature has mana value two or less, goes on the battlefield with haste. Otherwise, into your hand. If it has mana value three or higher, which is only Ranger Captain and Skyclave and some sideboard cards in this deck. Um, so usually when you build a deck with break Breakout, you have like a, a shitty aggro deck. <laughs> Your deck is, uh, with the exception, we actually saw a pretty cool brew with it yesterday. I was trying to use, like, Mirror Superion and, like, the 4-4 four, four Angel that costs 2. You have to tap a bunch of extra stuff and Sarah Avenger. But usually you just have a shitty aggro deck <laughs> where your curve is really bad, your deck is really slow, you're really easy to disrupt, <laughs> and you're just, like, you're, you're slow clock, easy, easy to disrupt, easy to ignore, easy to race, <laughs> easy, easy to interact with. Usually that's what these breakout decks look like. And also your card quality is really low. But there is, like, a combo deck that we've been playing that uses, like, all one and two mana creatures and uh, with some interesting overlap that just, I think, Breakout fits so well into. Uh, we I think we tr I, 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 need, I need, need to go back and see, like, what our record was when we played this deck pre-MKM. But th this was a deck that was doing well for us. We are playing, basically, Knight Errant of Aos, the main deck, um, over the Breakout as, like, our extra card selection card with Court of Calling. And so far, I think that... Breakout is better in my off-stream testing. I think Breakout is better, but it makes the mana, obviously, uh, worse <laughs> to splash a color. But the mana does function. Um, okay, good. No, pause this deck tech for a second. Or pause to open a deck tech for later. So I'm going to do this deck tech. Um, and the fact it just digs so deep for either your Sam combo or your Amalia combo. And there, there's some fun overlap between the two Sam and Amalia combos. Again, Sam combo, a Samwise Gamgee. A Cauldron Familiar and a Viserys Seer is infinite drains, even through a ring. Um, and then Amalia, Wild Growth Walker, and then any Explore or any uh, Life Gain is <laughs> like 30 Explorers, destroy all creatures. This this creature is big and haste, big and powerful. And if it gets haste with Breakout, you can sometimes just like haste with Amalia, combo attack with it in the same turn, which is pretty cool. And then with uh, Amalia, you're a lot of times going to use the Explorer to set up for um, for your Sam combo the next turn. And Breakout just digs so deep for your missing combo piece and lets you combo, I think, I think significantly faster. We're also playing a Kellen, Daring Traveler, which is a really good hit off Breakout uh, where you get to like put it into play and attack with it and trigger it immediately. But this card has... Um, you know, th this is a, it says whenever Ke uh, Kellen Daring Traveler attacks, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a creature with mana value three or less, put it into your hand. Otherwise, you may put it into your graveyard. So this is half the time, uh, a little bit more than half the time, drawing a card on attack. And then the other time you get to uh, scry or surveil, which is pretty good. And the front half is also gives you a map token, which allows you to start the Amalia combo. So like th this, this card, I think, is a really, really good one of. It's a good cord of calling target, good to hit off breakout. Um, if there was like a little bit more room in the deck, may perhaps I'd be playing more, or maybe it'll be overperforming today or something. But I've been I've been liking this card a lot. Um, is Spell Sky better than Grand Abolisher? Un unequivocally, yes. Unequivocally, yes. Spell Sky is better than Grand Abolisher. Um, all right, let's. Uh, also, Dran on Lavala <laughs> performed pretty hard for us yesterday in Vampire Pox, so I'm, I'm playing this as a uh, one of our anti yog cards here. Okay, let's get going. Is this deck almost Pioneer legal? Uh, so Samwise Gamgee is not legal in Pioneer, and that card is um, pretty dang important. Um, so usually for uh, lands, you would really like to have Sacred Foundry Overgrown Tomb. Sacred Foundry Overgrown Tomb allows you to cast basically all of your stuff. Go back to turn to the ranks here. Here we can't exactly get that. We'll figure out the fetching. Not a huge fan of Bowmasters. I like Liliana a lot. 
You can just cut the you just cut all the Urza Saga targets, play four ley lines. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, Master's kind of mid at the moment. Play to Fairy Time Reveler too. I don't know. I, at that point, you're just morphing into like four color value suit play line, but it's just like it's just like you have this card, you have domain. Like, can we please not only play green black cards? Uh, Urkel with the 33 months. Thank you. Welcome back. Oh, would you Samwise Gamgee? So this is our missing piece of the combo. It looks like our opponent's playing Gorios probably. Going to lead on the Goose. Running some variation of Zek Knight, Bowmaster with Siren is just fun. Yeah, that, I, I agree that that's fun. Again, again, just some loose thoughts, but at, at the very least, I don't like Saga. I want to have, I want to see four Leyland Bindings, and I'd probably play Liliana Overgrist. Is this just a turn two? Um, no, we won't be able to play Sam, Cauldron, Familiar, and Viserys here next turn. It's four mana worth of spells. I don't believe there was a way to turn two here. We may have a, a fatal symptom of lose the di losing the die roll. I had two Grisho in the lane, cut the Lily for Grisho a second. Lilian has been like just such a great modern card for me lately. Okay, well, opponent doesn't discard a track set, only has three cards in the hand. Gorias does just lose to itself sometimes. It's a pretty good draw we have here. I think I'm getting. I have to get a white source, and I can't get Godless Shrine off my wooded foothills. Guess that's okay. I'll just get. Well, I suppose I could I could get Overgrown Tomb and then use my Goose as the white source. Let's, think that's, let's do that. I'm going to lead on the Viserys here, here to play around Grief a little bit. Also, also if they remove my Sam, I get a Scribe. Four color seems iffy. I'm not the five color mission star chef. The, the mana works. The mana is you get to play less utility lands. Um, if you can get overgrown tomb, sacred foundry, all your spells are cast. All your Samwise, breakout, and Amalia are all castable off of those two lands. Um, you have gilded goose to help. The, the mana has been working for me so far, but I I agree. Uh, so far my so far my evaluation is breakout is a better uh, tool for the deck than. Collected Company or Knight Errant of Aos, uh, but it comes at the cost of worse mana. Okay, good to draw. What's nice here is that if they have Solitude for Sam, I could just cord for another Cauldron Familiar in response. Has my opponent uh, seen the Samwise combo before? We'll, we'll find out in the. Uh... A second, maybe. Isn't it GGG here? Yeah, again, zero mana cards, kick W. <laughs> but uh, the Court of Calling actually made it to where my opponent just would not be able to win even if they had a Solitude here. Okay, I guess I'm just going to go ahead and always yield to this at this point. Usually I like to wait a little bit on the auto yield, just give my opponent the um, benefit of the doubt that they're just not familiar with the combo. Most people on Magic Online are not like so sweaty that they're going to make you click out this and waste everybody's time, but that's okay. Also, sometimes people just don't get it after like 10 moves. But not the hardest combo to click through. Having second food beats a lot of hands itself. Having a second food beats lots of hands itself. Well, they could have salted Sam in response to the familiar, right? If we're that's what we're talking about. But it, it, it's just it's just so nice that like you have two really powerful creature combos that don't require you to untap with any creature, like uh, as opposed to devoted druid combo, right? You just, you can get all of your pieces into play the same turn and then combo the same turn, even, you know, even without, you know, a theoretical breakout giving haste. And there's like, there's nice overlap where like Sam can return to Malia for you. Cauldron Familiar starts both combos. Um, 
you don't need to play Adina in your deck if you have the Samwise combo. Because like, so what? One part of one part of a Molly is like you're going to gain a ton of value. You're going to be ahead on board, but actually you need to be able to infinitely close the game the following turn after you t explore twenty times if they just like can deal with your Amali attack. And then the Samwise combo gives you that in a way that's like very hard to interact with. Opponent's at four life. Got a Capybara uh, avatar just now. That's very cool. As much as I'm itching to cast Breakout here, because it's like the card we're showing off. <laughs> Probably also good to not give info. All right, Cauldron Familiar trigger 20 times, you're dead. So we're up a game against Gorios. I'm gonna bring in a Remorseful Cleric. I'm gonna bring in Endurance. Magus of the Moon is <laughs> almost exclusively for Tron and Titan. It's very difficult to just like, be like, I'm gonna lock you out of the game with Magus, but oh, oh no, I'm also gonna lock myself out. It's more so just like, it's just like so good against Titan. I think it's worth the inclusion. Um, don't really have a ton else we'd be that interested in playing. Dreadeth Magistrate does stop Ephemerate Rebound and Faithful Faithless Mending, Faithful Mending Flashback. But probably not going to bring it in. The Skyclave, I guess, is okay if we're worried about our opponent having Leyline of the Void post board. I think I think like surgical is a bit more popular for them. How high am I drawn to Lidvala? I think it's really good. Like this is my second day in a row playing it on my sideboard. It was, it was great in the Vampire Pox deck. I think the first copy is definitely good here. Kind of would just be trying out the second copy. I don't think you the second copy doesn't feel mandatory to me. Um I'm gonna cut the Skyclave. Kellen is also probably fine. I can definitely see myself getting like grief scammed and then like I wanna have a Kellen as my tutor target. Let's keep the Kellen on. Let's shave a goose. The Moxfield doesn't have the same cyborg. Can we check? Yeah, it looks like Moxfield has old cyborg for some reason. Let me date it. So I think it's just the, the just the Dranas and Limbalas. I'll keep it in no lander. This hand is incredible <laughs> against Gorios. We have both of our both of our silver bullet cyborg cards just in our hand. I could cast all of our spells. Uh, maybe we could use some <laughs> some black mana. Might just save breakout to pitch to endurance. Interesting. Trying to brew a Goblin Engineer breakout deck. Yeah, the thing is, Goblin Engineer needs you to play a ton of artifacts in the deck, and breakout needs you to play like 29 creatures, so not a lot of room left over for shenanigans. So this time I would love for them to discard an attract, so then I just get to go cast Remorseful Cleric and they're cooked. Where are they last time? I, the, the, I also, I, I don't know, this this deck is probably great against the Leyline Scion decks. Like if Molly just blows up the board, you gain a lot of life, you can ignore it. You're going for these fast combos too that also kind of can race about anything. I think I think this deck's pretty exciting. It was it was looking really good pre MKM too. I think it's just kind of been an underrated strat for a while. Imagine they have subtlety here, and then they have and they also have Gorios, and they're feeling so good. But I just just happened to draw both of these. Yeah, like, like Breakout's a very cool and interesting and powerful effect, but it's deck building. The problem with this card has always been its deck building cost is just nauseatingly high. In this deck, you are um, assuming you fetched one time, uh, le like like less than point. <laughs> you're, you're like much less than a percent to to brick. 
minimum number of creatures for breakout. I think 28. Um, 28 good hits, too. Like, I don't know. It's like... Uh, 20, 28. 20, 28. You really just don't want to be putting, like, four or five mana creatures in your hand, if possible. You don't, don't even really want to be putting three mana creatures in your hand. If you can help that. I think I'm just playing Amalia here. Why is Breakout now okay? What's the hook? Well, if you've been listening to what I've been saying about Breakout, like, the entire time, I keep going on about how the problem with Breakout is you need to be playing a deck that has the enough hits for it, and your, your deck also has to not suck, and your card quality can't be really low. This is kind of like the problem with the other Breakout lists, is that your card quality is just so low <laughs> you're playing you're playing like you're, you're just jumping through like basically every breakout list we've seen before this is just like a bad aggro deck it's an aggro deck that has a slow clock is easy to disrupt and card quality is really low that's like almost every breakout list i've seen maybe with the exception of like the asmo one that did okay at the hunter burton um this deck it breaking out is like a super efficient, super effective card selection uh, card for a deck running multiple creatures, <laughs> mul mul multiple creature combos, that, and breakout finds every single combo piece uh, and puts it into play for two mana. It is it is a very, very different formula from probably any any breakout deck you've seen. Asthma breakout, the pri again, like I... People played Asthma breakout, I just don't think it's that exciting to pay off. I tend to like to have... Um, Either like better better plan Bs that aren't all creature based, or I prefer to have higher mana curves. Jerry, eleven months. Thank you. Welcome back. Hope you're doing well. <laughs> yeah, but why male models? So here we're in a spot where uh, we have uh, several one mana creatures that we can draw to combo. Sonote Scout, um, Cauldron Familiar. And we also have like any land that lets me just go walker into one of those things to, or break out into one of those things to win. We are getting griefed. My hand is all crazy cards. Yeah, <laughs> our opponent made us <laughs> click through our Sam combo and we're up a minute on time. <laughs> it's funny. Thanks again, Jerry. Hate to say it, but this looks like a pretty slick Leyland Cyan deck. I, I, I don't think I agree, but. I I have like almost no idea like what eight cards you would you would cut to play Leyline Le Scion here. So I drew a land. Let's go ahead and play Sam before we break out. I guess I'm remo removing my green card for endurance pitch. So I, I'm possibly opening myself up here to um I have solitude. I'm possibly opening myself up to double Gorios. Sorry, I was joking. I don't know. I, don't, I mean, the thing is, it's, it's tough to tell who's joking about the Leyline Scion stuff and who's like, modern's, bro, modern's over, dude. <laughs> we had a good run. Okay, so let me take this Wild Growth Walker. And now I have a food so that I can start the combo next turn. It does really feel like my opponent has a solid dude, solitude. Yeah, I, I know. So that, that's what I'm saying. I know I could sack the cleric now to play around Gorios, those, um, to play around double Gorios. Because it really feels like my opponent has solitude white card, like to the degree that they're pausing so much, I would have to play around two of their other three cards being both Gorios Vengeances, which seems unlikely. But it, it does seem less likely that they have Looter Atraxa Gorios plus Solitude White card. So I think we can. And I, I think I don't know. I don't know if I would do this if I didn't. If my my like one mystery card wasn't like also endurance. Seems okay. Why do you think the numbers are similar for Breakout and Coco? I would think that Breakout would need fewer hits. Since you only need one hit and the same number of looks. Uh, I mean, Coco just sucks. <laughs> it's it's kind of it's kind of one thing. Um, you so like one thing on Collected Company. Once again, you you go ahead. Um, 
so like so like one thing is like with collected company you're kind of factoring like you're only hitting one creature off your collected company some amount of the time and it's not a complete brick um i think that usually like my collected company thresholds are like it's, it's also 28 29 huh I don't know. You could you could get away with less. I I just wouldn't really recommend it. Okay, we've uh fucked up. <laughs> we fucked up here. Doesn't Walker go back to hand? No, it doesn't. <laughs> it does not. Breakout's not that bad. Archaeologist <laughs> milling Gorios. Did it, mill, it milled the the Gristlebrand too? Right. It's brutal. Bearman is twenty six. Yeah, it's just like you don't want to be at twenty six. I know, you just have to be like you just have to figure out what number, what percentage you're comfortable at uh, breaking on. Like we're definitely like kind of maxed out on the number. Our number, our breakout is really, really good in this deck. Population size fifty nine, success is thirty one, sample size six, successes in sample one. We are nine. We're ninety nine point one percent to uh, hit, assuming we haven't cracked a fetch. If we've cracked one fetch, ninety nine point two. If this was a collected company, you would be bricking <laughs> uh, seven percent of the time. So that's just kind of like, or you you wouldn't be hitting two creatures seven percent of the time. So that's just that's just like normal Coco numbers. Coco is just like, just sucks. But it's also like if you, it's just the difference between one and zero is is also really big. And so like, that's definitely a factor here too. Wait, my opponent is not doing okay so if i draw any green card we can combo oh they just didn't attack with their gristle brand okay so i didn't draw any green creature so so what, what, what i could have done is sack my food they saw two damalia and then i just evoke endurance get another food sack it and then start the loop again now i guess i'm looking for uh one mana creature that starts the combo I did not find it. I did find the green card, but I'm one mana short of like sacking the the second food. Isn't sample size a lot smaller because you have a lot of hands and cards and play two lands to so sample fifty one? Well, you like what? But you don't know what ratio of cards you've drawn is. Uh, I can't believe we lost this fucking game. You don't know what ratio of cards uh, you've you've drawn are like lands versus creatures. Can't believe we lost. I, I mean, I guess I guess I just talked myself into the remorseful cleric sacrifice, trying to play around double Gorios. Is what it is. Just cast endurance after eating food. Yeah, then you can't sack the second food. So yeah, we so we needed to either draw a green card for turn, or a, a familiar Sonoti scout off of the the clue or off of the the horizon canopy. Yeah, you you, you can't do the math for like what <laughs> what ratio of lands and spells and breakouts you you've drawn. The only thing you know is you have two lands and a breakout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's true. So you, you could do you could do sample size fifty eight. Um, although you don't actually even know that for sure because I guess sometimes you could have one land gilded goose too. I guess that's not going to happen that often. Okay, going to keep this. Going to lead on Viserys here. Here, you you, you want to go Overgrown Tomb Sacred Foundry? Lets you cast all of your twos. Is Flash Fires Hibernation playable in that Phantasm Surveil deck as a sideboard card? Um. Yeah, maybe. I, I've I've been kind of liking cutting the green splash at the moment, where like Murktide is a lot less popular, and against Leyline Scion, you you're kind of just comfortable trying to go for the combo, or like get a big ledger sh and like and get a big ledger shredder to like buy you a lot of time. Um, you could you could play like Hibernation also as a good cyber card in those matchups. Depends on the mold of five at the moment. Is Dranith just for rhinos? Yeah, yeah, I think I've lived, I've also been playing against Living End still some. I feel like just the first Cascade Hate card is still is still fine to play. You can also bring this in against like Breach combo. Um it's like it's also like weirdly good against Prowess, where it stops it stops Iteration Exile card, it stops Lava Dart flashback, it stops Underworld Breach. Um so I, I would usually bring in any and it's also a one three, which isn't isn't the most relevant, but I, I would usually bring any number of this against uh Prowess if you played against Prowess. The first, I think the first copy is just kind of fine to have. Yeah, this this is Yogg Tech. We 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 were playing it in Vampire Pox yesterday, and it looked so good. And I think I think the first copy makes a lot of sense here. Just trying two copies at the moment. What's on the mold of four? It's 
Seems like it could be ported over to timeless or historic pretty easily. Any attempts will let you change. Um, so like one problem is like marsh flats and I guess just marsh flats is, isn't on arena. And it's one, of, it's one of your better fetch lands. I guess you're maxing out on Winds of Teeth or Wood of Foothills. You'd figure it out. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm not sure beyond that. I to, so, to some extent, like porting a deck into Timeless is like like a deck like this into Timeless is not something I super advise because again, Timeless is just a stronger format than Modern. That being said, uh, that being said, you could play Luris in this deck. You could play like I don't know. You could play Demonic Tutor. You you cut these two, play Luris like for sure, and then that would be a pretty big upgrade. Woodrow, the 19 months, they go come back. My opponent thought sees the breakout. So rude. Let's play Spell Skite this turn. Combo feels way too slow for timeless. Yeah. I think I think you'd maybe would just be more in on the Sam combo. Yeah, I'd play Deathrite Shaman over Gilded Goose. Although, yeah, Goose is still good. You Shaman's Shaman's really good in the deck too. So, I mean, that, that, that's one thing, like, you know, I did port the Surveil deck over to Timeless, and it's been doing well there. Um, and this is, like, largely because the deck got a ton of upgrades compared to the modern version. You get to play Treasure Cruise, Brainstorm, Source of Plowshares, <laughs> Luris. It's, like, it's like it's just better in that format. Interesting. So, one thing is if I'm going to be able to Court of Calling next turn, I have to. I have to play my Cenote Scout now. It does kind of stink. Look like Surveil way stronger in Timeless. Yeah, yeah, I, I think so. <laughs> it's it's hard to be like, <laughs> yeah, you get Treasure Cruise, Brainstorm, Luris, Sword to Plow Shares, and you're like, mm, weaker. I think it's good in modern too. It's not like my number one choice for a tournament. I did play it at the Hunter Burn, but Hunter Burn's kind of a special event. I, I don't know. I, I I would I wouldn't like not play it again. Right now I'd probably play like Black No Coffers. Uh Enchantress, maybe. Okay, so we have We have a combo with a spell skite. Against an opponent who's mold the four. Okay, brainstorms could build masters of blood. Yeah, I, I, I'm just like not in the. I'm not in the cut brainstorm from my combo deck era. Still, I maybe I'm too boomer. Um, you have scolding post board. You have <laughs> you have you have lottery removal game one. You can play around it. Uh. But I, I I just cannot bring myself to cut brainstorm from my spell based combo deck. It's, it's just, I just I just don't have it in me. Whatever whatever that is that allows you to cut brainstorm, <laughs> I don't have it in my heart. So this is another wild growth walker into the bin. Forest into the hand. I will bend this remorseful cleric. We're mostly looking for return to the ranks. Okay, there's return to the ranks. We did find it before we find found the Sam combo. Should be. We have to return three things. Let's keep it. Also, again, my opponent has to have a removal spell right now, or they they are just dead. We don't push to 20 power in Amalia. Well, we have to. We have to. I'm just... I'm assuming my opponent's going to remove Amalia. Because if they don't remove Amalia, this game is over. So I don't need I don't need to plan for something else happening. Sack the walker. Oh. No, I have spells got to protect. <laughs> It's a loop. You gotta, you gotta do the loop. We're learning. Okay. 
Hand is too high of a curve. We're going to take a mulligan. Probably keeping this instead of going to five. On the play and the blind. White Falcon with the 40 months. Thank you so much. To Amalia and Soren Tau combo. I'd love all the Pioneer combat the content. Hell yeah. Yeah, I think we just keep instead of going to five. My opponent is going to put a ley line into play, I think. Bizarro with the 38. Thank you. Diluted Fruitcake with the 21 months. Thank you so much. Ah, they bolted the bird. Easy rip a land off the top. Easy rip a land off the top. Okay, your turn. I have another explore here. They play Scion, I get two, uh, two map tokens. NT, Keck W. Okay, big draw step for me. Uh, I'm not going to be able to block, probably, so I think I'll just attack with my Sinote Scout. Thanks to Fruitcake and Bizarro. 21 to 38. Tough ball again, is what it is. Bristly Bill and Devoted Druid as a combo is modern playable. Is this a new card? I we as a, as a general rule, if you're asking about a new card that's been spoiled, please link it or describe it because it's just I don't I don't know if y'all just have every card name memorized as soon as you read it, but I just I just kind of remember what the cards do. Not uh, <laughs> not what the names are. I've not looked at uh spoilers today though. They're coming out so fast. It is a note they scout here. Okay. This is a combo with Devoted Druid. So you go Devoted Druid, Bill, Fetch Land, two counters on Devoted Druid. Does Devoted Druid put a minus one, minus one, or minus? It puts minus one, minus one, so it just removes it. I do like this card. There's actually an enchantment that does this landfall plus one counter. Um, that I was I've been kind of looking at that card as like, is that is that good? And then also can channel to like make a creature. It's, and I, I I haven't like really done much with it, but so they revealed a sign of Draco to their Sinote Scout. So yeah, it's... Okay, so we did draw a land. Um So if I get Sacred Foundry and then cast Wild Growth Walker, I could cast Breakout next turn, but I couldn't cord for Amalia unless I drew a land. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to get Temple Garden. Because I need to be able to go cast Cauldron Familiar, then cord for Amalia in response to the in response to the life gain trigger. So that, that does require me drawing a land this next turn. But I think that's got to just got to be our plan. We've seen shoot the sheriff doesn't miss anything major. Uh, misses assassins, mercenaries, pirates. So Ragavan, <laughs> rogues, warlocks, and outlaws. We'll see Ragavan. Pirates are actually also... I guess maybe more relevant for me. <laughs> so if I put an Exiles a Lightning Bolt here, hopefully they don't have a land to play it. I'm going to just take six, and then if we draw any land we should be able to win. A little short here. Kind of just non-functional mulligan. Oh, Miss Do Mrs. Dothy Voidwalker, too. Okay, so down a game against no Giganta Domain Zoo. They're playing Bolt. And unfortunately, they're also just kind of has pro everything a lot of the time. 
Let's bring in the Haywire Might. Do I want a second Skyclave Apparition? It's maybe overboarding a little bit. Kellen is going to get uh, chomped up in combat a little too much. Let's go ahead and cut the Kellen. Everything else looking pretty good. Trim a goose again, I guess. Do you think Thalia got eaten by the Gitrog monster? <laughs> I'll have to... You'll have to read my uh, my blog post with all my fan theories. What if <laughs> oh, well, the Thunder Junction is more powerful than MH3? Hmm, well, uh, Throne of Eldraine was more powerful than Modern Horizons 1. I didn't think that that would necessarily be like a history that repeats itself. S like standard set released around the same time as a Horizon set that's just better. <laughs> uh, we'll see though. So a Temple Garden Overgun Tomb probably? Opponent is two for two on Leyline starts. But now Forge Tinder has protection from all their creatures. Yeah, it was kind of Oko's fault last time too, huh? Yeah, you could maybe play Kellen joins up in the in the uh upcoming Tibble to deck. I'm kind of worried about Leyline Binding. Like, should I should I just be playing Spellskite this turn? Let's let's play the let's play the Sam. Yeah, yeah. Aldrain had Mystic Sanctuary, Oko, Once Upon a Time, and. So at least three banded modern cards. I feel like there's a. I feel like there is a fourth banded modern card. From, who? From Eldraine. Can't recall. Maybe it was just three. Yeah, I mean that that era was just such a nightmare. Just like every set, there's so much. Oh, I, can't, I didn't realize I could convoke for two. It's just going to, obviously just going to court for one so that we could leave this back to block if they do have like force of negation or endurance. Well, I guess endurance wouldn't work because we have second food token. Blue Witch's Cottage. I, I said that Mystic Sanctuary, Oko, and Once Upon a Time are three. Three banned modern cards and Throne of Eldrain. I just kind of feel like there's a fourth. Thank you for conceding, opponent. We're going to game three. We're on the draw for game three. I think it's just those three. This card seems insane. I, I, look, I read it. And I feel like it's not a modern card, at least. Slow, clunky, over, over expensive. Could be thinking of Luris. I mean, that whole time frame is like. That time frame was fucked up. It's like Luris, Oko, Mystic Sanctuary Field of Dead, Oko, Hogak. Arkham's Astrolabe, <laughs> Field of the Dead, were just all printed in the same, like, six months. <laughs> it, it was, like, Athasa's Oracle, Underwood Breach. Just, just, like, all back to back to back to back to back. So we're on a mold of five, which is less than good. Instant speed, two titans that can't be subtletied. How how is this something you've read? Off of this card, you have to have two titans in your hand, and it costs six mana, so you're still just also getting counterspelled. That, that, that requires you to have two titans and six mana. What are we talking about? Graveyard, Cauldron Familiar, value. Someone was like, this card wasn't going to spot. I don't get it. I don't get it either. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> so Rest in Peace does not stop the Amalia combo. It does stop the Sam combo. So next turn, I can break out, and if I hit Wild Growth Walker, I can 
Amalia combo with Cauldron Familiar. Recast a spell during your turn, other than your first spell that turn, make a zombie. Whenever a zombie enters the battlefield under your control, put a counter on it for each other zombie that entered battlefield under your control this turn. Oh, my opponent also has Breakout in their deck. It's so funny. In their Rest in Peace deck. Let's go! Breakout entered the Exile Zone! Ah, I would never register Breakout. So I, I, if this was a black red, I could go Cauldron Familiar into into Court of Calling for the win. Looking for a Wild Growth Walker. Let's go. My breakout better than yours. This card is very very cool. It's probably not going to be super good. If you could, if you if like it lets you like. If, it, if 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 you could <laughs> uh, trigger it, wait. Other than your first spell, cast a spell other than your first spell. Okay, I, I read this backwards. No, this card rules. I it's probably I, I, the card is very cool. It's going to be very fun one stream kind of card. For people excited about legendary truth, you might cycle grief. I don't know. It just like keeps going. Like imagine playing this and then casting two Mishra's Bobbles in the same turn. Obviously, that's like best case scenario, but it came with five extra power, right? Like, like th this card might actually just be. Wait, is this card just not like way better than Monastery Mentor? Seems worse over like two or three turns. I mean, being I think that doesn't matter <laughs> that much. I don't know. <laughs> if, if either goes for two or three turns uh, unimpeded you're good <laughs> you're fucking good dude but it triggers those creatures too which is I think pretty interesting also also like you're gonna have some decks with it where you have like carry and feeder grave crawler and you just like each time you, you, you play grave crawler it's like two extra counters on your next zombie crematory mentor yeah maybe that was better a deck tech for definitely not Chris. Satora Reanimator. Yeah, I don't know. Looks like yeah, that that looks about right. <laughs> uh yeah. Could consider playing some subtleties in the main. Probably still shouldn't. Yeah, I don't know. Main deck looks about right. <laughs> uh, I think I do think you'd want a green surveil land in your mana base. I think this this has been like a, a pretty important, I, I just like mandatory in my opinion in tracks of decks. They, they just get hard cast so many times. You usually post board, but like your opponent will just like keep a slow hand with uh with with graveyard hate. You'll play like a, a grindier game, or maybe you grief ephemerate them. Maybe you hard cast a solitude, and then you, you just do hard cast a tracks uh in the deck enough to want a green source. Underground Mortuary right there. Okay, I, I missed it. I thought this was backstreet. Okay, never mind then. Um I don't like the I don't like Mortuary so much because it doesn't cast mending. I, I tend to prefer the blue green one because like it just casts both of your two mana looting cards. Um Yeah, I, I I I was pretty into the blue green one, but there's probably a good argument. Uh, it's four to fairy seems like too many, but I I, I think you probably care a lot less about the sideboard and more like does the main deck look good? I I don't I don't yeah you know, I don't see this very often with deck techs besides like the mortuary for blue green. I don't think I'd really change anything about the main deck. Um, if Yogmoth becomes less popular, I don't think you should main deck prismatic ending. Um, in my mind, that is mostly there so that you can. Uh, XL Agatha Soul Cauldron, and to some extent Voidwalker, but Voidwalker is also less popular. Um, do I want to keep this Court of Calling? I guess it's probably better than the average draw. Probably up against Gorios here. Be actually pretty upset if they have Archaeologist for my Kellen.
for having eight black fetches so I have more ways to get underground. Okay, that's that's fine. I, I guess I don't know why you prefer to have eight black fetches. For me, white fetches are like so much better because the only the only cards you ever cast to go turn one are white, so like getting basic planes is always feels the most relevant to me. So there's that. I guess I, in that scenario, though, you're still having four misses. But you, you also, like, just don't care about, like, having every fetch land hitting your green your green uh, surveillance either. It's just, like, something you get laid into the game, typically. So we get to trigger Kellen. Pretty likely to hit whenever you trigger Kellen. Oh, right. Kellen is attack, not damage. Okay, never mind. Never mind. Argon Melt, good username. Thank you for the 15 months. Hope you're doing well. Didn't play against, like, much Gorios at all this week so far, but this is, like, our second Gorios opponent this league. Interesting. Was Wonder printed into Modern Day Last Modern Horizons? It was, yes. Will they print uh, Anger this time? Does my opponent is my opponent just reading Samwise Gamgee, or do they have something they can do? They've lost connection to the game. <laughs> lost connection to the game. Anger and Dredge is scary. Yeah, I, I don't. Anger is a pretty powerful card. I don't know that it would necessarily be too good. It'd be a fun card. There's no way printing Anger is safe. I don't know. <laughs> I think it's probably like doesn't change the doesn't change the dredge dynamic that much, especially where like a lot of the a lot of the creatures. No, wait, it, it, wait, is anger even good in dredge? Like prized amalgam enters tapped, silver smoke ghoul enters end of turn, anger only like haste your ox of Agonis and your narc amoebas. Doesn't even do anything in that deck. There's a breakout on top. Let's keep that. Maybe you could build a deck where it made some sense. So they Grave Raid their Atraxa. Do they have Pending into Loot Atraxa into Gorios? That'd be bad. Okay, they don't. They have an Attainted Indulgence in their hand for next turn. And they thought he's my court of calling. So I'm drawing breakout for turn. Shall just cast Ariak Champion into play, I suppose. Could surveil first before Kellening, I think I'm supposed to. There's a return to the ranks on top. Which only gets me back Viserys here. But I could potentially return to the ranks of the Viserys here and then scry into a cauldron familiar. I guess it's just like enough better than the average card to keep on top. Breakout is a good card. Break, break, I, yeah, Breakout is good in this deck. Breakout is, I think, pretty bad in your aggro decks. Like, you're, you're sh like, <laughs> you're like. Uh, your domain zoos and your and these decks that just have really low card quality, really slow clocks, and are really easy to interact with. But it is really good in this deck where it's just like tutoring up your combo pieces, letting you go off really fast, insane card selection spell. It does come at the cost of making your mana a lot worse than like playing something else would, but Oof. so looks so like they they are gonna be able to Ephemerate their attracts it here too. Don't see a solitude yet. Anger and Murktide. Anger would not play Murktide. Or Murktide would not play Anger. <laughs> Either way. <laughs> Do you think when people keep trying to put Breakout in Domain Zoo, they should be playing Agent into the two drops? Well, the problem with Agent is that you can't play Stubborn Denial, and Stubborn Denial is really, really good in that deck. I don't know. Breakout is also just not good in Domain Zoo. You just, just shouldn't have that card in your deck. So they got Ephemerate, Thoughtseize, Gristlebrand, Flooded Strand on the first Atraxa. 
Still don't see a solitude. Doc Prof with the 49 months. Thank you so much. So my, my goal here is to return to the ranks Viserys here. Then I'm going to be using my one of Surveil Land and then the Viserys here Scry to try to find Cauldron Familiar to combo off. If I see if I see it on top, I can I can draw it with Kellen. Thanks, Doc Prop for the 49. Such a long time. This is the Gorya's deck the reason some mill players are backing seven surgicals? Part of the reason, I'm sure. I do, I also just don't know what it is the mill players are doing. <laughs> they seem to be having a good time though. All right, so or surveil to the cauldron's yard. That does work. It does work because I have food tokens in play. So this goes to the graveyard. I return. Do I just return both? I get I get a bunch of extra foods. Does that matter? Seems like it could matter. Extra life too. Couldn't sack the other Sam yet. Yeah, we're looking for Cauldron, Familiar, and kind of nothing else. I think I might as well fetch first. On tap land so I could sack a food. So, first look. Don't get that many looks, I guess. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and attack with Kellen and then sack Kellen to the Viserys here in response to the trigger, so I get uh effectively two more looks at a cauldron familiar. I guess this is a lot of looks. Um, if I keep this on top, I can explore a theoretical cauldron familiar um, to the graveyard. So I think it's the same as bottoming. I guess I, I guess it wouldn't let me hit like another Sedoti scout or something. I could also just return Kellen here, potentially. Cauldron familiar entered the revealed card zone. Let's go, dude. Let's go. That was a cool line. Got a, got a good amount of looks there. The, like... Attack with Kellen, trigger on the stack, felt like fancy play. So it seems like Gorio's gamers are the ones that make you click through your loop. Dude, the, Modern has been so good. It's been so good lately. I've been having so much fun. I feel like it's been like the best it's been in like six months. Oh, infinite, right? Yes. Okay, so just like match one, we, we do win game one against Gorios. Kind of blundered last time, but hopefully we won't blunder as much this time. Um... I think yeah. So I think just bringing these in. I'm, I, if if they show me leyline of the void, then then we'll bring the S skyclave back in. Too worried about that card. Yeah, no living in to just farm all the brews anymore. I mean, like I I, I said this when they banned vile outburst. That like gameplay is likely to get a lot better, and I I do feel like that's been the case. I I've been pretty happy with the vile outburst ban. Living in and rhinos still exist. They're just like they got patch note balanced and. I think I think the rhinos will likely like dominate the tournament again in the next few months, and I don't know, shit's good. We're like trophying with vampire pox, trophying with mono black no coffers, trophying with enchantress. I'm just I'm chilling, doing well with like breakout of Molly. Deck was feeling real nice off stream last night. I'm looking at no lander. Yeah, even Doomwake is having fun right now. So one lander, six lander. Let's go to five. This hand has an endurance, which is nice. 
Um, so you usually want to go Sacred Foundry Overgrown Tomb. Old scam was real brew killer. It kind of depended. The thing about scam, like compare, we're, we're comparing scam to zoo, right? Uh, or sorry, scam to like li living end. It's like if scam grief scams you, yeah, it, it's good. It's gonna win like you know sixty five percent of its games no matter what. But it just doesn't do that that often. And so it's like when it happens against you and you're playing a brew, you don't have to think that much about it because <laughs> it kind of doesn't matter what you're playing. You're getting Grief Scam turn one. You're not that likely to win. Um, but Living In just does the exact same thing every every game. And it's it's just it's just difficult for brews to be good against Living End, I think. I am having fun in putting Sly on every deck so take all the grain of salt. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I I I also have been having a lot of fun with Leyline Scion. Like I, when modern is like when like something busted like Leyline Scion gets printed, it is usually really fun. Like if anybody remembers pre nerf companion metagame, that was like that was so good. <laughs> pre nerf companion modern was like uh, unironically some of the best modern ever. It was so fun, but it was not it was not very balanced. So Gorios or Purrs is choose Gorios. Kind of nice to have a green card for endurance. Yeah, Leyland Tron is like oh, so so sick doom. Wild Growth Walker or Arnix. Let's take the Walker. We have life gain with the Goose, so we can cord for Amalia, and then life gain potentially. I preferred. Pre-nerf companion to pioneer. Pre-nerf companion pioneer. I see. I see. I don't. I remember played a little bit of that. It's just very fun. Like Cascade Valky can be fun. Like when, when magic is broken for a while, it's it's usually good for like a month or two. It's you know it's kind of it's interesting and exciting. But just you know you have to fix it eventually. Hmm. Change the rocks for enchanters over Antonize. I just haven't. I just haven't. I I just cut that cut that slot and haven't haven't really missed um, missed having these one mana enchant land removal spells. I'm also gonna lose my return to the ranks. Yeah, we multiply this game. You get grief ephemerated. It is what it is. I guess I played this so that I could draw a cord and cord for two. Although if I if I hold it, then I could draw Amalia and combo with Amalia immediately. What well, Leyland Science shells felt the best? Um, I think I think Domain Rhinos or like like Rhinos is like super underplayed and is likely still like one of the the better Leyland Scion decks. Um. I've I've also been very much enjoying the Enchantress deck. That that deck has been just like beyond beyond fun to, for me okay so they, they have gorio's gristle brand let's go to the packet um the i think i think i've also really been liking it in coffers so i don't know like <laughs> i guess those are the main decks i've been playing it in but yeah the domain enchantress one is so sick like nick those being a good card in that deck is is such a big deal the crime skeleton that combos with the barman uh no but that sounds very interesting if you want to link it. Land sign is good in every deck, only competitive. But only a competitive deck that's good without it. I mean, it's just, it, every deck is hyperbolic. I, I tend to like to have, like, pretty exact language when we're talking about magic cards. Otherwise, I go crazy. But uh, it, it is good in most decks, yeah. <laughs> yeah, domains, it's good in domains, too. Yeah. I don't know. You 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 have to be something that has like overlapping synergy. Like it's good in coffers because it works with cabal coffers, and you can pitch it to march. It's good in enchantress where the leyline is a good devotion enabler for Nykthos. It's an enchantment that like gets keeps your ball rolling, um, and it turns on leyline binding, which is a card you really want to play in enchantress. Um, It's good in Domain Zoo, where you can, like, excel the Kavu. You care more about Domain in that deck. It's just, like, you, you have to you have to have, like, extra synergy with it, I think. Like, in Tron, turning your Tron lands into lands that can tap for green is, like, 
surprisingly super sick and you know there's just a lot going on uh i'm gonna play molly i think although i should have got sacred foundry so i could fetch a surveil land next turn what's drawn a four uh yogmoth better grave crawler this is better grave crawler Skeleton Rogue. Okay, it's not a zombie. Whenever you commit a crime, pay black. If you do, return it from the graveyard to the battlefield. Wait, this card does... Oh, so, so this card doesn't go infinite with Goblin Bombardment, but you just pay a black ping, play a black ping, play, play a, black, a black ping. That's cool. Yeah, when you commit a crime, you target your opponent... Or any permanent they have or anything in their graveyard. That is committing a crime. Anytime you interact with them. So the main phase, there's Celestial Purge. Alright, let's break out first. Oh no. Actually, I have to, I have to use the Goose. To cast the Sinoti Scout. This turn, I guess it's okay. Alright, take this Remorseful Cleric. This is just a 1-mana 2-2. Two, two. Cauldron Familiar in the graveyard. Get a little bit of value. Nice little overlapping synergy there, too. Hope of Gipper isn't a playable card, unfortunately. It is a very cool card. You have you have Ranger Captain also for this kind of effect already. Yeah, for some reason countering a spell isn't a crime. But according to all the EDH players I know it should be. Um So I guess I'm gonna wait a turn on the surveil so that I can go Sam plus make a food for Cauldron Familiar, bring back Cauldron Familiar. Is there a breakout miscounter? In in this deck, we're less than 1% to miss on breakout. Um, we have not, sorry, so we have not missed yet, but it might happen. We had an opponent who bricked on their breakout earlier, but they also have, like, rest in peace in their deck, you know. They're down to 9 I still get the Cauldron Familiar back. Uh, I, you know, they could have a Sweeper. I don't think I need to bring it back right now. Although if they had a Sweeper, I'm still just bringing it back. And then letting it die and bringing it back again. So no Supreme Verdict. They have double Gorios. Good. Do we play around double Goros? We did it earlier today and got super punished. They at least won't get to ephemerate this. They choose Solitude and Celestial Purge, so... Solitude up. I'll be able to combo at instant speed if I draw a cord. I'm going to wait a second on this Cauldron Familiar. Mr. Vale. Watch guard of the six months. Thank you so much. Okay, keep that on top. Get in for four. Nobody, my opponent doesn't have any target for Celestial Purge right now. We also shouldn't be worried about hitting him, like not being able to combo if we hit Amalia. We can just gain so much life. They mill another attraction. They've already used two of their three Gorios, though. They didn't reveal one to here. So a lot of a lot of potential on this. 
break out. Amalia just should be a win, unless they get rid of Wild Growth Walker in response. I suppose we're going to put Endurance into hand. Probably should have got the Familiar back last turn. So now they're going to pitch Solitude. Did they find... Ephemerate. I'm targeting my Sam. Let's go ahead and bring back the cat now. Sam, do you have the Ephemerate? They go after the familiar, which makes sense. And then they get to block the wild growth walker, rebound the ephemerate. Pretty bad shape. They put a card on top. I think I'm just going to go ahead and cast my Endurance now. They know about this Endurance. I don't want them to be able to go, like, Thoughtseize and then respond with Gorios. I want to be able to... I, like, I guess they're just going to Exile with Solitude, but that's also, you know, okay, I think. But they're not going to target the Archaeologist. Got a lot of life points. Three cards in their hand. Yeah, what is this dude? We have translation on Divine Shield of Assimilation. Daniel, seven months. Thank you. Welcome back. This card's a subtlety. That's scary. That card is like insane here. Okay, when it enters the battlefield, exile one other creature until it leaves the battlefield. Comes attached to your creatures for as long as it remains attached to it becomes a copy. It's a tutorable overing for Stoneforge Mystic decks. Easy block. Also just makes a uh, top deck return to the ranks better. But it probably has another subtlety. I can't, I have, I have to cast everything I top deck though, because they're a grief Thoughtsy's deck. I can't like sandbag anything. Yeah, not a super surprising second subtlety. I'll keep the Amali on top, though. Second time... So I guess I guess they didn't make me click through the whole combo, but... Last time we had an opponent click make us click, click through the combo twice, and we were still up <laughs> several minutes. Uh, Trax says the card castable, faithful mending into the yard for great for value. Not looking very good for me, especially because they almost certainly have just you know, more interaction here. They, they 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 looted away a subtlety earlier. I think I'm still gonna go ahead and crack this main phase. We do get an explore. If we find a land, we get to explore again. My opponent responds by flashing back that new faithful mending. This card is an Archaeologist and a Flooded Strand. Archaeologist is also probably a pretty good card here. And then they Celestial Purge my Amalia in response. I think I will sack a food to explore again. Seems okay. Cauldron Familiar into the graveyard. So I think I might as well get this back and explore again. There's a Wild Growth Walker. Would have been really nice... Uh, have my Molly lived. It's going to put it in the yard, maybe try to find a return to the ranks. Find a stomping ground. Also at 18 life again. 
If my opponent hard casts the the next turn, though, I, I don't think we'll be able to win. Two cards in their hand. They get a hard cast Gristlebrand. They get a tapped Watery Grave. Taking three. So I don't have Endurance or Remorseful Cleric anymore. So I, I'm either going to get Kellen or Amalia, I would think. Yeah, we saw the tutorable Stoneforge O-Ring. I think it's, it's, it's exciting. Bathrobe King, <laughs> great username. Thank you for the 23 months. Can I make a food? Sack of food and cord for Amalia here. So make a food. Cord one, two, three, four, five. One short. I get Ranger Captain. I'm just going to cord for three. Probably going to still grab Kellen over Ranger Captain. They also could have more Celestial Purges. They, they definitely seem like they boarded in a lot of those. Okay. I'll probably set Canopy in response to removal spell here, so we'll just play it first. Could find Court of Calling for like Spell Skype, maybe. Although I guess the problem with with that line now is that they just don't get to block, so let's let's not then. We're gonna grab an Amalia. Yeah, but it's definitely making me work for it. Benjamin, 14 months. Thank you. Welcome back. I'm hoping to get to like chump block with Cauldron Familiar so that I can use it to um, gain life a little bit easier for Amalia. Although I can't also make a food. They also don't want to let me jump block, so I'm going to go down to 11. Okay, so green. The Molly in response to life gain from Solitude. Could have done that. I, I kind of wanted them to maybe like cast a grief or something. Benjamin with the 14 months, Rennie with the 15. Thank you so much. I'm going to untap also. It could, could be just better to not play around too much, but. Okay, if my opponent has a removal spell, they'll. Okay, they're up sixth. Holy shit, are we going to win this game? I also just put a cauldron familiar in the graveyard, which means I can gain life again at instant speed. Looking for a return to the ranks. We got so flooded over there. Just gonna carefully click through everything. I guess I will make a food now. No, let's let's wait till that Amalia triggers on the stack. Well, I guess it's gonna go on. They don't have anything. So if they if they have nothing, and boy does it not seem like they have something, I'm gonna just attack them with Amalia. Let's take rules. So I'm at a cool 71 life. I'll try my best not to fetch end of turn. Assuming there is an end of turn. Let's go, dude. 3-0. Oh. Awesome. And this hand is awesome. No blood crypt to get them. Swamp go.
I always love when my goose gets. Well, I don't always love it. When my goose gets pushed, it's like, I got a food. We both spent one mana. I always feel a little ahead. Opponent suspends a profane tutor. Could be a lot of different things. Seems like I should just go for the turn three kill here. Yeah, I saw the new O Ring equip card. That card looks very sweet. Suspend a profane tutor. You like that line last turn. Can it field me? Can it march? Okay. Fine. So they also get the profane tutor off next turn, which is a little less than ideal. So I think play this, play this, then play this next turn. We'll have we can only court for one, and we can't start the combo. I guess I'm just gonna go Walker Sonote Scouts so if they have car and I can kill the Karn. Cauldron Familiar in the graveyard for some value. Been doing that a lot this uh this league. And now we can actually go Samwise Cord for Viserys here next turn to win. They're gonna rip my veins. Bain yeah, I don't know if they're playing Soren in, in the stack. They're playing March, so probably more stock coffers. But Vein Ripper does is good against Sam combo. Seems really sick. Rule of Law for two. Can turn off when you want. Yeah, yeah, the, the card rules. I, I, I've never been super close to wanting to play actual Rule of Law, but also that's only been because that card is three mana. I've never really wanted to play it. We draw a land, we have Spell Skyed up too. Wow. This deck is... I, I, I've i been liking this deck. It's just like so fast, so consistent, so resilient, can grind. Definitely slept on. Felt this way before the breakout tech too, but the breakout tech also seems like an upgrade. So I'm not sure what they tutored for, but I, I think I just make them make the first move. They crack the field of ruin, we win. I find it surprising how playable Profane Tutor is. No, like this card rules too. It's just like obviously it takes a couple turns, but it's it's really good. Modern is a slow format to some extent. You know, it's like a surveil land format. The interaction is so good, it gets just slowed down a lot. There's a like cabal coffers. They have four cards in their hand. Do you think walls can be playable in pure modern without access to wall of blossoms? Uh, probably playable enough. You should definitely just play whatever deck you're interested in in pure modern. So let's cord before spell sky gets turned off here. If my opponent has two interactive spells that they can cast with three mana, we will probably lose. But now we have that second food token, which makes it even harder to lose. Basically beats another piece of interaction. So you'd be like cling to dust plus removal spell still. Other outlaws you control have haste. Enters the battlefield, make two mercenary tokens with this ability that's kind of lame. To tap target creature, creature gets plus one, plus oh. But it gives him haste, so it's a bit better. It's a lot of power toughness for four mana. or It like comes down at haste. Oh, this doesn't have haste, though. The other ones do. It's a weird card. So now my opponent's doing something. Uh, they're casting Orcish Bowmaster, so a card that should have no effect here. Just walks through the motions, and we are up a game against Coffers. It's good that our combo deck's winning a lot of game ones. It's usually pretty important. Um, Needle's too good against Coffers to not bring it in. Haywire might seems correct to play also do i want skyclave apparition and haywire might skyclave's okay too get rid of karn let's keep the skyclave in grant the two years love you buddy 
Hope that arm's doing okay. The odd kills with creature combat more often than combo. This deck does not. Yeah, that's true. That deck's more of like a threat of the combo kind of strategy. Sand's pretty good if it draws a black source. Let's go ahead and go to six. Let's set a mold to six also. Only, only polite of me to join them. Okay, let's keep this, put back the Stomping Ground, Overgrown Tomb, Sacred Foundry. Let's just cast all of our spells. It puts on a mold of five on the play. Feeling pretty good about that. Let's get the Subnote Day Scout down. All right, one mana, one one draw card. Feel very rewarded for putting the land back. My verdict on breakout. Breakout is very good in this deck, but my, my verdict on breakout is the exact same as, as it has been. It is a card with like insane deck building restrictions that uh <laughs> that like usually require you to build your deck poorly. It just kind of happens that the card is very good in a deck that's playing 29 creatures that cost one or two already, and a deck that has all of like you know multiple combos amongst those cards and having like the selection is really really strong and also giving haste to molly is icing on the cake or whatever second dothy voidwalker is interesting but yeah more or less it's very good very good in this in this specific deck and i i think it's still quite poor in like the the bad <laughs> the bad aggro decks that have been popping around So we get to explore out of Amalia. Take a food token off Sam. Getting rid of two Dothy Voidwalkers would be kind of tough. Gilded Goose. Let's not draw that. Yeah, can't needle the card cabal coffers. Yeah, New Gerald's pretty cool. It's like a blue monastery mentor. That's probably a bit better. Than mentor because it triggers off creatures because it doesn't trigger off your first spell each turn but, but i think that matters a little bit less it only matters when you untap with it and you should be pretty happy for untapping with it dude what a moldify for my opponent don't know what their hand is i guess but i'm pretty good so far that was breakup and breakout's good in this deck um it's, it's exactly what i've been saying the whole time like you need to have a deck that doesn't suck that doesn't have low card quality that is it needs to be fast and also needs to be interested in the breakout effect while like meeting the deck building requirements. And to me, to me, this is really like the only deck I've been really excited about it in. Um, it does make the mana a lot worse than playing like Knight Errant of Eos or Collected Company, but it is it is better than those two cards, and I think it's worth splashing for. You also already have a Magus in the board, so the red lands aren't the worst. What? I'm going to cast Damnation. Wait, they cast Damnation. Okay, then they want to exile all of them. And then they're going to just play Gilded Goose. Okay, they got one card in their hand. Um, they have four Karns and three Needles. I guess I'm going to Needle Karn. Um, why don't I go ahead and just Surveil first so that I can make a slightly more informed decision. Good call on their, their part to not sack the other Voidwalker. Let's just Graveyard this. Needle card in the Great Creator, and then probably Court for Kella next turn. Yeah, yeah, Breakout allowing Amali to Hasty is like a nice little treat. It hasn't happened yet, but it's it's a cool part of the 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 stack. Okay, so we've chosen correctly on our Pithic Needle. It seems didn't draw a super relevant card. Ooh, Breakout plus Priest of Titania. Yeah, Breakout could be okay in Elves when Priest of Titania comes out. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to kill the Karn or not. I do have, like, a Spell Skite in the deck and the Haywire Might. Let's just see, you know, just see if, like, that <laughs> if this lives. They, had, they have a card in their hand still. Opponent maybe just reading. Aquaman with the 43 months. Appreciate you, homie. Welcome back. Last card's March. Okay. Breakout Bloom Tender. Yeah. 
If if you could break out into sign of Draco, breakout would be good in those kind of decks. Probably should be fetching it then. Nineteen lands in the stack. Or what are they top deck? Shieldred the Apocalypse, I guess. Let's prioritize keeping our life total high. Hopefully we can draw Skyclave or Court of Calling for this soon. Can't sack the foods, I guess. Very good multiply from our opponent. So Call of Familiar is going to be really good at like sandbagging the shielder. I just get to block and, and bring it back and I get to keep making foods off the Gilded Goose for a bit. And then if I draw Sam, I can maybe like use it to get Kellen back. Cool game. Guess they should just not be attacking with this shielder. We'll see if they figure that out. My opponent thought seizes so that they can escape cling to dust. Don't want to bring the the familiar back yet. Um, that's a good draw. Do I cord for Sam now? So I wouldn't be able to get Skyclave for the Shieldred. But I would be able to... Be able to cast Kellen, right? So I go... So, I mean, they, if they cling to us my Kellen, it's not super ideal. But I, I would get to, like, blank the card draw from the cling, which maybe is just correct. So I can go... The thing is, I really need to make a food with the Goose... Which means if I court for Sam, I can't also cast Kellen. So I think we just pass. They might try to clean Cat. Yeah. That would be great if they did. Why can't you get Skyclave? I can get Skyclave. I'm just not convinced it's that's the best card for me to get. can still get Skyclave by courting with the Familiar if I feel like that's what I want to get. Okay, so let's just court for Sam now. Viserys here, Ranger Captain, Court of Calling, and maybe Breakout are all lethal top decks. I do go down to one life here. I can't sack my food. Maybe I've... I just blunder that bad. I guess I kind of just felt like my life total is higher because I have all these foods, but it, it isn't. Begin combo. I don't have a sacrifice outlet. This is this is this is not this is not Amalia. This is Kellen Daring Traveler. He did Skycliff dot dot dot. Thank you, brother. Dot dot dot. Yeah, I guess so. I just think I had so many outs to win the game. I kinda wanted to go for this, but I guess we we're still in a grindier game too. I always hate the dot dot dots. I should have this Griston also. Yeah, Goose is kind of awkward against the sweepers in general. Doesn't kind of let you explore. No, because Karn uh, stops the map. But usually it does. We have double Sonote Scout to dig for our second land. This is a hard matchup to mulligan in. Our hand is good if it hit, we hit our second land. Oh, keep. Put it on the mold to six. Easy. Maybe you should prioritize getting black mana less because of Urborg. Oh, did I take a damage off this canopy? That was a little bit of an oopsie. Alright, cycles of cling. Best case scenario, they go land, suspend profane tutor, and I just draw land and win the game. Combo with the Molly, I guess it isn't quite 
Game over. We play a Dothy Voidwalker. And we don't draw the land. So we'll see what happens off this. There's the land. I think I'll just cast a Breakout. Since I don't have the life gain for Amalia right now. Let's get Sacred Foundry, since I have double white cards. Not spectacular hits. Third mana from our opponent over there. Maybe they have Profane Tutor and Dothy Voidwalker and decided to play Profane or Voidwalker over Profane Tutor last turn. They're pretty behind in the race. Not super surprisingly, attack for three. So I think what I'll, I'll do here is Ranger Captain for Sonote Scout. Ranger Captain for nothing. So do I upkeep a sack the Ranger Captain or nah? I think I should. I guess it lets them cast the Ranger Captain if they want to. Can't tutor anything, but then they just have a pretty good blocker. And they just have infinite four mana non-creatures, you know. Let's let's upkeep it. Be kind of funny if they have a Ballista. Fails to find. Looking good here. I'm gonna kill the Ranger Captain and get these beatdowns going. Make like a ring, like just not as good of a tool for them. Um, and then I think I'm sacking the cauldron familiar. The green creatures in play are nice for Court of Calling, and obviously, like I can I can just play Goose and get this familiar back next turn, potentially. And then also also I guess that would also be like a life gain source for my Amalia combo. I think there's a good chance. Something of mine dies, though, this turn. Cycles another Shadow of Doubt. Takes four, or, yeah, four. Down to five. Plays a Field of Ruin. Cat the Hand to start the combo, is it? I don't know, brother. This plays around, like, no removal spells against my opponent's mono black deck. I think the extra damage and, and like, not having to spend the mana later when I'm, you know, only have three lands feels felt at the time. Pretty dang reasonable. I feel okay about the play. Smilotron with the 27 months. Hope you're doing well. Thank you. Welcome back. So no four drop here is interesting. Let's go to planes. Just cut me off breakout for now. Explosives on one. Doesn't stop my Amalia combo. Graveyard of Viserys here. Yeah, let's just go to an attack for four. I think my opponent will pop the explosives and then I get to kind of go off with Amalia. Because I have the ability to return this Cauldron Familiar for the life gain start. I'm, ass I'm assuming it's correct to go for main phase. Like, I do, like, lose a lot of my board presence. Or whatever. And then... I still have Grist in play, and, I, and just, like, the value of exploring so much is pretty high. I also get to put my opponent down to two. Like, they're, you know, they're only at two. I have Breakout and, then like, a bunch of cards to hit. Should be okay. They can't pay a ward on a melee. Yeah, that's a good point. 
So graveyarding any non-returns to the ranks card, I think. Can't, if I could cast both breakouts next turn, I'd probably keep a breakout here. Graveyard another. Cauldron familiar. Value. I've already played my land this turn, I think. Sam in the yard. So if we find uh, Return to the Ranks, we can immediately infinite combo. Feels likely we'll hit one. Guess we only have a few more looks. Five more looks. Up to for two and 20 cards. There it is. All right, feeling like we're in pretty good shape. Yeah, we saw this card, the a stone forgeable oblivion ring. It's, it's pretty good. Why do we cast goose there? I need I needed the food from the goose to bring back the cauldron familiar to start the loop. To fill the room can shuffle my return to the ranks away. Comboing open Z Dick does not know. Yeah, I was, listen, we're supposed to do this. It's just so much value. They have to have they have to have like edict plus four drop here or something to even have a chance. They're still like dead to like break out if it's not like edict plus a ring and it's a ring of two life. It's just so hard for them to win. Could have plus grist after comboing. Yeah. But then but then we can't like surveil return to the ranks to the top. So I think you're supposed to do it first just to get the extra loyalty on grist. Yeah, we, yeah, we, we, it is. We also just have this grist in play. That's a big problem for them. They're thinking. They, they, they feel like they can maybe win this game. I'm feeling pretty good about our chances to play for a trophy next round. I'm including any number of Dina Blender support. So you don't need to play these low card quality, individually bricky, clunky cards because you have the Sam combo. Because you have the Sam combo, you don't need to play these individually weak cards. Which is one thing I really like about this list. No fastest oracles, you know. Prediction already live. We do predictions when we hit three and no, usually. So they're taking a game action. The game action is cling to dust Viserys here. Go to five life. The life gain here does allow them to remove Amalia. But they'll just die to return to the ranks on two cauldron familiars. Johnny, 34 months. Let's go. Appreciate your brother. Welcome back. So might as well plus the grist first. Okay, so cauldron familiar target. Well, I guess we could maybe get got, uh, should they? Oh, I also get to cast it for one more because of the insect token. So familiar, familiar. Sam Amalia. So they have to have another cling to dust. Okay, looks like we're good. I guess they get a march. Okay. Four now. And it's keeping their seven. Keeping this one. Back second goose. When I call it Somalia, because then people think I'm, I'm it's like the country of Somalia, maybe. I don't know. You, when you build a deck, you can name it. Whatever you want. So my opponent's playing for a trophy, and they are leading on Colony Guard, and I would love for this to be like an Insidious Roots deck. I've been wanting to play Roots to Colony... Oh. So probably probably glimpse combo. So I'm glad I have that Dranith Magistrate in the board, I suppose. The matchup overall is also probably fine. So I suppose we're taking the Walker. I need to leave this food as a way to gain life for Amalia, but I won't be able to. 
combo next turn unless I draw Sonote Scout, Ariok Champion. Oh, not Ariok Champion. Sonote Scout or Viserys here are the only ways I can combo next turn. Ranger Captain for Cascade Stop. Well, the problem with that is it doesn't go into play. If Breakout could put three mana creatures in play, one, this card would be broken, and and two, uh, <laughs> we, we, would, we would have done it, but uh, I, he's just a turn too slow. Did you build the original Malia combo deck, or is it more of an early adopter tuner? Uh, in Pioneer, like, I didn't do much work on it. I, I did zero work on it in Pioneer. Um, and then in Modern, I, I built the Amalia XAM build that has been pretty good for me. And, but I didn't, I didn't do any work on it in Pioneer. This one damage. All right, for some reason, I thought they were going to block effectively. They found it a track, so. And then they're also kind of set up for another good Cascade next turn. Do they have any interaction here? None that's castable this turn, but they'll have a binding for next turn, probably. Yeah. Do you have Dranith Magistrate plus board? This matchup is also probably fine, where like their combo doesn't always end the game on the spot, but mine does, and we're both like turn three decks. That makes sense we did lose the die roll. So they put Binding Agent in Xander's Lounge. Only three cards into their hand. They declined to put a glimpse in, which makes sense. And we draw a game winner. Assuming they don't have a Force of Negation. So you go Cast Cauldron Familiar. I guess the game's also not over. Response to the life gain, Court for Molly. So Molly can see this life gain and then start going. When the upkeep to avoid force negation. I mean, you open themselves up to just going like. Hey, I guess upkeep doesn't really lose anything, huh? They didn't have it. We also didn't see a force of negation in any of their 32 revealed cards. But you're right. There's not really anything we lose to. Maybe fire ice. I guess I don't fire up. Yeah, the combo is so consistent. Like Bre breakout is breakout is a really really good tool for the stack. It is it's better than C Coco or Knight Errant. It it does come at the cost of making your mana worse, and you get to play less utility lands. But so far, it's it seemed pretty worth it. Don't you lose to Binding if you go upkeep? Though they can't cast the Binding right now is the thing. They only have d Domain Two. Graveyard Cauldron familiar. Such an easy combo to click through. Could we not have gone Fetcher Black Swords, play Seer, Familiar, Court for Sam? No, because then we don't have enough green. Because have the Sacred Foundry in play. Because like if you're just gonna fetch for a second black, you go Seer Familiar, and then you don't have you don't have a third green to Court of Calling. Professor Brumbledore, thank you for the ten months. Hope you're doing well. So they're gonna they're gonna go for glimpse again, I think. Maybe maybe they'll just lay line binding. We'll see. No, the, what's nice about this deck in modern is you don't need to play Aetherflux Reservoir because um oh the Viserys here is in my Oh I can I can tap the Viserys here for convoke, so yeah, we can win next turn. Um you don't need to play shitty cards like this because you just have the Sam combo to win the game next turn. We are going to win the game next turn. We don't have to do it by playing Dina. We don't have to play Ape Flex Reservoir. We don't have to play Blood Artist. We just get to play another infinite combo. If you leave some on top, you have guaranteed combo next turn if they tap out for Glimpse. I, I, I currently have, I guess I could have done that earlier. I currently have guaranteed combo next turn, though. Which, right, Sam also did it. Okay, your turn, opponent. So they're not going to 
binding. They're going to YOLO a, a glimpse again. And they hit another Atraxa, but they don't put an Omniscience into play. Atraxa does have Death Touch. Can they cast Leyline Binding? I, I guess if they have Temple Garden, Sanders Lunch, they can. So they put another Leyland Binding into their hand and another Shardless Agent. Still no Force of Negations revealed. Not too worried about that card. Oh, we have the life points to shock here, huh? So we get to return to the ranks X equals 3. I'm going to leave one of the Cauldron Familiars in the yard to start the loop again. I'm going to go target Sam. Uh, familiar. Then Goose, I guess. Of a Sam. Doesn't really matter. I guess I could attack with Amalia. Flu. For the eight months. Thank you. Welcome back. So what they needed to do was, I guess, binding my Viserys here in response. But now, they, now they're now they cooked. They can't uh, disrupt my combo anymore. I might as well go for it on their upkeep, right? Can you shut court Amalia in person to explore 19 times, then gain 19 XP life? No, because you you explore more times with Amalia. Uh, if you hit lands, if you hit lands, you like if you hit lands, the you, there's no counter that goes on Amalia, so you have to keep going. But you you can shortcut. But I, I remember like during RC Atlanta, people were like trying to shortcut Amalia, and they would like they would fuck up the shortcut like every single time. <laughs> Or not every single time, but there would just be like I was, there would just be like something a little wrong with how they they shortcutted. If you don't hit a land, you can. Yeah, yeah. If, if you see a card you like on top, then you shortcut. You, usually, what you do is you just go until you you find a card you like on top, then shortcut. Yeah, opponent, you are dead. Why is Amalia necessary here in the deck? It's very good in the deck. The fact that we have both combos that and the combos overlap well with each other is just awesome in a Court of Calling breakout deck. Amalia combo good. Go well with Sam. Good with breaking. I don't know. The deck. <laughs> it's like, why is. Why is the Yagmoth deck playing Yagmoth? Why is this? <laughs> that's that's good. Okay, up a game, playing for our trophy here. I'm gonna bring in the Strandith Magistrate. We also have the Ranger Captain as anti cascade stuff. Obviously a little less necessary than it used to be. Um, I'm gonna cut the Skyclave. And then I'm gonna bring in Haywire Might for their Leyland bindings. I guess occasionally you'll get an omniscience. I think I can probably cut the Spellskite, since it seems like Binding is probably their only piece of interaction. Maybe they bring in some more. It's just like that, not that necessary to have more. Although, this is also kind of not really a Kellen matchup. Kellen's a little too slow. Don't think I want Force of Vigor. I was keeping the Spellskite. Sting back Terror. Is this the... Oh, I haven't seen this one. So this is a four mana... Flying, trample, plot for three. Doesn't get haze. Gets minus one, minus one for each card in your hand. Oh, it could be a good standard card, and it's not really a modern card. Uh, let's keep this on the draw. Isn't Skyclave the only emerald that works again? No, a Sky you can't Skyclave Emrakul. Um, Skyclave is only mana value four or less, but also Amalia can kill Emrakul. Any concern? No, only bring in Magus against Titan and Tron. Just, just don't bring it in to like lock your opponent out because you're just gonna lock yourself out. Okay, my opponent's Mulligan to four, and then put two Leyland of Sanctities into play. 
It's going to downgrade from Goldspan. I mean, it's two mana less. It's hard to really compare. Okay, I can lead on that now. Great draw. I guess, am I going to lead on this? I feel like I probably want to... Yeah, let's actually surveil on turn one. I have a plan. Because I want to be able to... E if, if I don't find like a combo piece with the surveil... Then, or specifically Viserys here or Wild Growth Walker. I just want to cast Breakout next turn. And then the following turn, if I find Wild Growth Walker, I can go Amalia plus Cauldron Familiar combo. And if I find Viserys here, I can go Sam plus Cauldron Familiar combo. Yeah, this this card is also like just does not, like nothing against us. Doesn't stop Cauldron Familiar. Maybe they think it does. Any chance for yeah? I guess I need to get. Oh, I have no black red though. That's the problem with this is I won't be able to. I won't be able to cast a Molly plus Familiar next turn. Oops. Still breaking out, I think. Also, just find Joranneth Magistrate sometimes. At least our opponent only has one card in their hand. So we kind of brick here. So we're going to grab some note oh, scout, which stinks. It's going to go with the return to the ranks, though. If we can surveil something into the yard. Which we don't. Okay, bummer. Attack for one. Sport probably has a Cascader in their hand and they're missing their land. I think I'll just go Sam familiar, get a food. What's the reasoning for a force of vigor over pick your poison the sideboard? It's better against Amulet Titan, and that's the matchup I want to be targeting. I'm not I, against like I, I against like Leyline Scion, I'm not trying to pick your poison them. I'm just trying to ignore that aspect of their deck most of the time and just combo. So I think is the right plan in that matchup. They board in those ley lines against us? It seems that way, yeah. Also seems like they have something in their hand. I can't really imagine what it could be. Maybe they don't. Another Cenote Scout. Let's play this first. It can make my return to the ranks better. The other option is to Amalia plus Crack of Food. They have something? They have a Dismember. Dismember Sam after I get the food tokens. Funny. There's a Court of Calling on top. So they should be pretty cooked next turn, assuming they don't untap and win the game. Did I see Mage Bane Lizard? Two mana, one four. Whenever a player casts a non-creature spell, Mage Bane Lizard deals damage to that player equal to the number of non-creature spells they've cast this turn. What's the actual mana cost? Like, what color is it? Red, I'm assuming. Red, white. Yeah, this this is blank against us, I think. There's maybe something I'm missing, but as far as I can tell, it's a, a blank card in this matchup. So, one, two. And then we're going to court for Viserys here on their upkeep. Yeah, they probably thought cat targeted. It's a good good point. All right, I think we're trophying. Or the trophies have been flowing in this week and last week too. No, Coco sucks, dude. Coco is so bad. Just. Delete collected company from your data banks for the most part. 
There's going to be some exceptions, but it's just not a good card. It bricks so much, it's four mana. Your standards for four mana spells in Modern has uh, gone up significantly. I guess, should I... Should I, uh, I guess I don't need to get rid of my Amalia. Breakout is two mana. This card is a, it's a two mana spell. And it only finds one thing, but it, it's half the cost. But also, Knight Aaron of Aeos is better than Collect a Company if you want to play, if you want to play Abs, and we've played that version, and that version's fine. Okay, trophying our first first uh, league on stream is pretty sick. So I think our second Amalia trophy. Let's open these chests. Breakout, actually good in the deck. Found some new Oko and Creativity. Unplayable, unfortunately. Sorry. Of course, across four mana, right? <laughs> no shot. Open a Giroff's Messenger. Put an Urza. I love this Tristani. 